When it comes to installing a truly custom car audio system, there is a lot more to it than just connecting some wires. We often need to build stuff, whether it's a custom subwoofer enclosure, an amplifier rack, speaker adapters, and more. In this video, I wanna cover some of the most common fabrication mistakes that I see made. That way we can improve our builds in the future. Unfortunately, I've made a ton of mistakes in the past and I've done my best to learn from them and I wanna help you guys learn from those mistakes as well. So let's dive in. Mistake number one, because this tool can truly have the biggest impact on the fabrication quality of your builds, not getting a router. When it comes to woodworking tools, a lot of people have a circular saw, they might have a drill, they might have a jigsaw, but for some reason, a router isn't a very popular tool. And I think that's why a lot of people don't really consider getting one when it comes to building custom car audio. But I think this is a big mistake because in my opinion, and if you've watched some of my videos, you can see that the router is a very versatile tool. And that's because with the router, we have all these different bits that we can use for different tasks throughout a build. Flush trim bits allow me to copy a profile like these mobile solutions templates that you guys see me use all the time. We can use different profiling bits like roundovers and chamfers in order to add depth and dimension to a piece. We can use rabbiting bits to cut grooves in material. That way we have perfect gaps for upholstery materials between the different pieces. Really, there are a ton of different applications. And the router comes in handy for many different tasks throughout a build, whether it's building custom speaker adapters, making parts for our custom subwoofer boxes, amplifier racks, etc. So even if you're new to car audio, I definitely recommend getting a router. You can get an entry level one at bare minimum. They're definitely worth the money for the value that they can add to a build. The next common fabrication mistake that I see made is not using the right upholstery adhesive. When we're in the final stages of a build, we're going to be applying our upholstery materials, whether it be carpet or vinyl. Usually we've spent a bunch of time making sure that all of our pieces are nice and smooth. So we wanna make sure that once we put those upholstery materials on, that they are nice and smooth as well, and that they're not gonna lift, they're not gonna wrinkle over time. To accomplish this, we need to use the right upholstery adhesive. The commonly available adhesive that I like to use is DAP Weldwood Lando Top and Trim Adhesive. I'll drop a direct link to the right stuff for you guys down in the video description. Now typically it's best to apply that stuff using a spray gun but you can also get by with using a brush but regardless that stuff works really really well. It's a contact adhesive which means you will apply it to each different surface, you allow it to dry and then you stick the two surfaces together and that stuff is not coming undone. What you do want to avoid is using using the aerosol spray can type adhesive that can work for like really, really light materials, maybe something like a suede, but generally it's best to use the right stuff Check out that link. The next common fabrication mistake, not planning ahead of time. I know that this one seems like a no brainer, but I see it all the time. As an example, I know that it can be exciting to think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna do a car audio build. So you hop online and you start picking out your subwoofers and everything, and you're just so excited that you just hit that buy button before you really have done any planning whatsoever. It's critical that you want to measure the space that you're gonna be working within in the vehicle and make sure everything's going to fit. It. A really good idea for part of this planning process is to use a 3D modeling program. A free program that you can use is something like Trimble SketchUp, which is very easy to learn. And as an example, let's say that you have a couple of amplifiers and a DSP, and you wanna make sure that you have enough room for all those within a certain amount of space. You could model that amount of space as a rectangle, and then you can model each of the different rectangles for those different devices. Make sure that everything is gonna fit. You could plan out the routes for all the wiring ahead of time there are a lot of good things you can do with even a simple modeling software. Another good idea for planning is you can use mock-up cutouts of things like subwoofers to ensure that you're going to have enough space in the location that you're planning on putting them. Another important aspect of planning, and I kind of mentioned this earlier when I talked about using routers to create gaps between different pieces, you want to plan for how you're going to wrap all your pieces once they come together with those upholstery materials. This means leaving gaps and clearances between those parts so that there is room for that upholstery to sit. 
Gapping panels correctly is really an advanced technique that gives your builds a very, very high end look. If you wanna see a full video about that and a tool I designed to make this process go a lot more smoothly, you can check out this link in the corner of the screen. Now those are some advanced ways to account for the planning process. You have to even pay attention to the simple stuff. The old saying, measure twice, cut once, definitely applies. And there's two key areas that I really, really wanna emphasize here that you pay attention. One is subwoofer mounting depth clearance. I see it all the time. People think that they're going to use these subs with like a nine inch mounting depth and they're gonna put them behind the seat and behind the seat they only have seven inches available that's not gonna quite work. And the other area this translates over to is speakers. When it comes to mounting your speakers, even if you're making a custom speaker adapter in the door with different fabrication techniques, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enough clearance for that magnet to go into the door. Roll down that window and make sure that that window isn't gonna hit the back side of the speaker. And the other important aspect is when you upgrade to aftermarket speakers, that speaker generally has more excursion, which means it can get a lot closer to the factory grill of the door panel. You wanna make sure that that speaker isn't slapping against the door panel. Again, all about planning and proper measurement. Now, speaking of planning on the fabrication side, also on the electrical side, when it comes to doing a custom car audio build, you wanna have the right gear and the right plan. And that's why I wanna take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. When it comes to car audio wire, distribution blocks, and other wiring accessories, my go-to is New Concepts. They have a ton of power wire options, all sorts of colors to match your build, tons of wiring distribution blocks for both the positive and ground side, and of course, different options for RCA signal wires and speaker wire. Tons of flexibility there for the electrical side of your system. Again, a special thanks to New Concepts for being a monthly channel sponsor. You guys can learn more about them at the links down in the video description. The next fabrication mistake, not using the right materials. Think to yourself for just a second, how much wood is in a vehicle from the factory? None, so typically we wanna use as many plastics and other non-organic type materials throughout a build as possible. In particular, when it comes to speaker rings, we really wanna make sure that we use plastic materials because the inside of those doors can be exposed to water and humidity. Now, the exception to this rule is when it comes to making subwoofer enclosures. The good thing about wood-based materials, something like a sheet of MDF, is they are extremely dense, which is really good for acoustics. It's not as likely for that enclosure to resonate. Now you could use plastic materials for making an enclosure and since they're not as dense, a lot of times you need to make sure that you incorporate more bracing in order to keep the enclosure from vibrating. But the downside with plastic materials is they can get expensive very quickly. If you don't believe me, look up how much a sheet of three quarter acrylic costs. Now, if you are using a wood-based material for your subwoofer enclosure, you wanna make sure that you use the right material. Again, a high quality MDF is a good go-to or if you're using something like a Baltic birch, you wanna make sure that you're using a high end that has a lot of plies, not just the veneer on each side. But the wood type material you definitely wanna avoid is particle board. Do not use OSB. It is not a good material for subwoofer enclosures. The next fabrication mistake, and I kinda of mentioned this earlier, but I really wanna emphasize this, picking gear that is far too large for the allotted space. Again, I see this all the time. I think a lot of times what we might have happen is we might see a friend has two 12s in the trunk of their SUV and we're like, well, I gotta beat two 12s. I gotta get two 15s in the trunk of my Honda Civic. That might not be the best idea. You really need to take into account your application. I can't stress this enough. The final fabrication mistake, and again, this might seem like a no brainer, but rushing through a project. When you're doing a custom car audio build, even the smallest mistake up front can kind of amplify throughout the course of a build. Let's say that it's as simple as not cutting the edge of a subwoofer box perfectly straight. The next thing you know, the build is done, the install is done, and you turn it on for the first time and you hear that air whooshing noise because it's not sealed up properly. So, okay, maybe you can add some material to fix that and seal it up, but in the meantime, that panel that you attach to it is now at a slightly different angle, so it doesn't line up right in the trunk. Your beauty panel doesn't look right. My point is here is that if you make a mistake, take the time to correct it up front rather than just continuing on throughout the build to try to get things done. Take pride in your work and do your best 
to solve those mistakes. So question of the day, I wanna hear from you guys because it's important to get your feedback. What mistakes have you made fabrication-wise in the past or what common mistakes do you see people make fabrication-wise? I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget, next time you're planning the electrical side of your build, definitely be sure to check out show sponsor New Concepts at the link down in the video description. You guys can check out some of my other mistake videos here on screen. Also, a special thanks to Bryson, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And as always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.